as we know, um, and we have some introductions already. Um, so welcome to the talk here. And uh, uh, that's a dystopian world thinking. Um, we'll, we'll go to that next level for sure. So I hope you guys uh, already know, it, know me from yesterday. Some of you might be knowing. Uh, so this is Yogi. And I lead uh, product design at Target. So when product design, we are talking about user experience research, accessibility, enterprise UX, and guest UX. Please do note down the important words that I'm calling out. Like certain words you might not recognize directly. Like you, you must be speaking about user experience and things like that. So um, I'll quickly start once we are able to project. So what uh, we are designing for joy. And uh, we are talking about uh, UX and accessibility at scale. Right? Um, when we are doing that, I want you to focus, uh, because we had so many good speakers in this talk. Uh, we have learned so many dif different point of views. Right? Let me give you a different perspective. A perspective of scale. And a scale of $110 billion organization called as Target. As you know, or you might be knowing, Target does not have any India stores as such. Though we are across all the 50 states of US, we have 2,000 stores in US. And we have presence at every state, including the District of Columbia. So when we talk about this scale, the definitions of these words that we are talking about, for example, joy, design, users, they keep on modifying. And they should modify so that it goes and grows into the core of the organization. So when we talk about Target, Target is the sixth largest retail organization in the world. And we, we also see that Eight out of ten shoppers are our guests. We have uh, the second uh, largest um, loyalty program for our customers in the US. So when you are talking about such a scale, it's very important to focus. So when um, uh, I'll just quickly move back to the some of the slides. We spoke about 150 million guests, right? And uh, let's move forward. We, we have already covered that. Move forward, please. Yeah. So when um, we have uh, an understanding of the users that we definitely need to have in a very specific and a special way. And uh, when we are talking about um, the core philosophy of design, we are uh, saying that it should enable discovery of joy for all the families that shop at the store. So note these important words, how user experience teams are enabling it. Because we have a big user experience team that actually focuses and enables it. And how do we do that is we have simply changed two words in our philosophy. When you call users, we call them guests. And how does it change? As soon as you call a, a, a user a guest, you are in a state of a gratitude already. Before you uh, started designing it, you are already in that state that guests are there. I will give it to them. I have a sense of giving to them. That has already been ingrained, right? Similarly, when we call experience, we call it joy. So you, experience can be any types, right? There can be experience which is not that good, but an experience can be good. But when we talk it in a, uh, in a perspective, on a frame of joy, we are talking about designing for joy, for guests. So. Um, I'll give these uh, further details uh, and ask Nam to follow it. Nam is uh, 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 from my research team, 
and we do have a special guest from our accessibility team as well. Both of um, my colleagues will actually focus on how do we discover guests, how do we discover joy for guests, and how far we go and take the joy, including the inclusion parameters. So let me give it uh, to Nam and she'll take it over. Thanks. Thank you, Yogi. I must start with a disclaimer. It wasn't a very joyful start. <laughs> the laptop was changed, I don't have a clicker, so it's a little bit of a uh, wrong footing that we started on, but at the end of the day, that's what happens in, you know, in retail as well, right? Like you expect something and then the world changes within the blink of an eye. So I think it's a, it's a good setting to be in because that's the speed at which we're dealing with retail changes in the world today. So I'm going to start with, you know, understanding the word guests a little bit. Yogi has already set context, but if you look at that figure on the right, um, you know, about 250 million US adults, out of which 150 million shop with us. So it's almost 60% of the US population that shops at a Target store. So that's a large scale to deal with. And as most of you know, if you're working from a you know, geography that's not local to the US, you have to learn everything about the culture from scratch. So you can't design for someone without knowing who they are. Imagine someone sitting in the US and designing for Big Basket in India. You know, they have to really know what goes on in our life on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's the amount of effort that it takes as a user research team for us to be able to design for that 150 million. And then the rest of them who don't shop with us, that, that's also an opportunity for us, right? That's a market that we can look into. So it's research for both of those. Um, and then when we say guests, right, just like Yogi said, uh, we go that extra mile. It's not a transaction for us. It's about joyful, aspirational experiences. And that's why we call them guests, because we really cel celebrate the stories of the people who shop with us. At the same time, there's no average guest. You know, I've gone through a lot of presentations in the morning and there was pro personas, profiles and all of that. We don't have personas that we can deal with because 150 million, how do you, you know, bring them or distill them into five or six personas? It's very hard. Um, so what we can do is go into layers of diversity, income, ethnicity, gender, you know, so many layers that we have to look at and it changes every month, literally. You know the social and political scene in the world, you know how fast things can change. So with all that in mind, we need to know who they are and what they value to be able to give them joy. So the question is, how do we decode joy for 150 million guests, right? Even in this room, if I were to just ask each of you, I'm pretty sure the definition of joy would be very personal. You know, like, um, is it a cup of coffee? Is it the fact that you made it to the venue on the strike? You know, all of that. So joy is very personal. And for us to be able to do that from a, a, a different culture for 150 million guests is a big deal. So that's where the user research comes into the picture. And it's not one research team. I want to call out, um, you know, the extensive amount of research that goes into understanding those 150 million. So there is, the, you know, there are these massive teams, as you see in the right side, there's, let's, I'll give an example of apparel, right? If I, if we're um, doing something around apparel and we want to understand who the guest is, we have to understand the category, we have to understand the competitors, we have to understand the landscape, we have to understand the innovation in apparel, we have to understand second-hand apparel because people are selling used clothes, there's so much that goes into, you know, just one category. And then back to what you had shared, imagine the number of categories we deal with. It's not one or two, it's about 25, 30 categories. So to be able to do research for those many categories takes an extensive ecosystem of researchers like you can see from digital research, creative, omni-channel, competitors, data analytics and there's so many more. And so the idea is that UX is just one part of these systems, right? We don't work in isolation. Unlike a product company which can deal with UX as a product, we have to deal with multiple categories, multiple experiences all the time and that's why we need that ecosystem of research to understand guests in that dynamic context. And so when you come to UX at Target, it's designed for delight, but it's not limited to digital. Now, this is uh, sort of the you know, pivotal point in our presentation because everything from here on, you will not see UX limited to a screen, even though it de it's designed for a digital surface, but it extends far beyond that. And those are the examples that we'll go into because digital for us is a doorway, right? People come to Target maybe on their mobile phone or on a tablet, but that's a doorway into the 2,000 stores that we have across the US. It's always driving to something else. It's a catalyst, it's an enabler. So it's not designed in isolation. 
So within UX, there are a lot of capabilities that, you know, a lot of teams or capabilities. So, you know, we have accessibility, research, content design, product design, design systems, and a few others. And I have a colleague who will come and speak more about the accessibility angle in a bit. Um, and this is all within UX, right? But the point is, on its own, UX cannot function for that scale of 150 million. It's impossible for us to only design with one team. So on a given uh, day on a, or in a given week, the number of projects we deal with has all these teams involved. So, you know, when we are working on, you know, a given campaign, let's say we're doing a marketing campaign, then UX has to work with communications, with own brands, with supply chain. So the, the beauty of this is, and I've been at Target for 10 years now, the, the reason I've remained here is because I'm not working only on user experience. I'm understanding the scale and size of a retail giant like that, which operates at that scale, and I'm able to work with all those teams. So it, it really enhances my knowledge and horizons, and the same for the team. They're able to deal with so many different skill sets, and they also, you know, down the line, they can even think of, okay, what does it mean for legal to be involved in UX? You know, if you put a line of copy there, and it's, let's say, it's uh, offensive to a certain demographic, it's a huge issue for us from a legal standpoint. Same with asset protection. You know, there are um, neighborhoods in the U.S. that uh, are very prone to theft, let's say, right? Asset protection gets involved in that sense. So how does UX work when you're picking up something from that store? So there's so many angles to consider. It's not as simple as we think it is. And so that's the point we wanted to paint in terms of how UX works in that ecosystem. And the role of UX is thereby to create, you know, tangible interactions from something very intangible. Like joy is not something you can touch and feel on a day-to-day -day basis unless you understand what joy means and for each of those demographics. And the role of UX is to make that usable, valuable, and accessible for all of those people. So I'm going to go into a few examples here. And you know, true to target style, we don't have a ton of text on the slide, but I'll be talking through those examples. But coming back to our underlying theme of joy, right? Um, we have this um, option uh, called Drive Up at Target. Drive Up is basically you go to the Target app and you create an order and you, you say, I'm coming to the nearest store. So let's say from here you're going to Manyata, you know, like whatever, five kilometers away, and you're saying, I'm coming to the nearest Target store. I need a Starbucks in the next 15 minutes. And you, I'm sure all of you have ordered a Starbucks in this room at some point. You, the number of ingredients, layers, flavors that you can add is like endless. So we have partnered with Starbucks to make that possible for 1,700 stores in the US. So the UX there is about how quickly can they add that order, how many layers can they add, how personalized can it be, and how many interactions it takes for them to do that when they're in the car, driving to the nearest target, most likely with a bunch of kids in the back, because we have a lot of families that shop with us. So if there's a you know toddler in the back seat crying away and you're on your phone, that UX has to be intuitive enough to enable you to quickly place that order drive to the Starbucks, to the target nearest you, and the, the team member will come out and give you a, a Starbucks in a spill-proof you know, uh, glass that you can then take on your way to work or wherever you're going. So that's the joy that's enabled through user experience, but in association with the Starbucks partners, in association with the store's team. So we can't design that screen in isolation because it's partnered with the nearest team or the nearest store for us. And similarly, the same option for drive up, you can return your orders. So I'm sure all of you here shop at like Mintra and a few other places. And we have this uh, system in India where you can just initiate return from your doorstep, right? They'll, they'll just come to your door and take it. But in the, in the, in the US, it's, not, it's very different in terms of returns. So you, instead of having to do it all of that online, let's say you're driving past a store, you can just say, I want to return my ta uh, target order. And you can just go to the parking lot. Somebody will come and take your order from there. You don't have to enter the store, go through the bill, none of that. So that's, again, a component of joy via ease. The next example is team members. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, user experience, which is not for guests. So we have, imagine for uh, 2,000 stores, the number of warehouses, distribution centers, agencies, vendor partners, sourcing, supply chain, offices across the world. All of them use digital services too, right? It's not just target.com and app. Everybody in that ecosystem is using some sort of a device or a you know uh, chain in the back end, and we do UX for that as well. So there's user experience for team members, vendors, global partners, and then there's user experience for guests who are our consumers. So that UX is extremely complex because let's say a guest walks into the store and she has a complaint 
and the team member comes to her and she has a phone and she has to quickly pull up the guest history, order, profile, everything in, within seconds, initiate a complaint, all of that on the phone. Now that U UX is equally important because if it takes more than a few seconds or minutes, that creates frustration which is not joy for the guest. So you know it's all connected, we can't do UX only for team members or only for uh, guests and I, I know a few talks in the morning focused on service design, I think it's that mentality, like you can't design for just front, front. I think they called it front stage and backstage, so it's, you know, it's both in our case, we have to look at that entire ecosystem. Another one is design partnerships, so Target is very well known for uh, collaborating with large brands like Apple, Disney, uh, Lego, um, and how does UX come into the picture here? So we work also with a lot of marketing creative teams, photography, you know, um, uh, teams. And so I'll give you an example of Lego, which is one of our recent partnerships is when we're designing, let's say, the digital experience for Lego, right? Of course, the brand will have a huge say. Like when we're, I remember when we worked with Apple, every filter, every button, you know, they will have a point of view because it's Apple's experience on target. So you can't just design UX on your own. You have to, you know, portray that brand in the right sense. Same with Lego. Like when you go to the page, you can look up target.com, search Lego. Uh, you will get a page that's designed for storytelling and curiosity. It's not just transaction because you're telling a story of a brand as big as Lego. You can browse by age, but we all know Lego is not just for kids. You know, everybody here I'm sure has used Lego at one point. You can browse by theme, you can browse by story. Um, there are, there's Lego for Jurassic Park, there's Lego for Star Wars. So there's so many ways of just selling Lego at Target. So that's where use, UX goes into more than just selling something. It's also storytelling and you know all of that in the back end and bringing that to life how does how does that flow what does the page look like how easy is it uh, you know how accessible is it all of the, that goes into the design partnerships target circle is our loyalty program it's the second largest in the us um, and when we say loyalty right i mean we've all used loyalty programs where you get reward points cashbacks coupons what not so for that to be ha to be enabled on a digital surface is, uh, like I said, again, it's not limited to digital. So a lot of times a guest will walk into the store, they're going around the aisles, they're looking at products and they're comparing actively with someone else, you know, with some other retailer. So the circle offers need to be intuitive enough to tell them based on your last purchase, here are some offers they were giving you or here's how you can redeem it in the quickest way possible. Or you can use the same circle app when you're checking out. If there are 10 people ahead of you, you can skip that line and check out faster. There's so many things like that from a loyalty angle. But then going back to that 150 million, what does loyalty even mean to so many guests, right? Like what, how much are they willing to pay? What is their income uh, group, you know, what is what does affordability mean to them, what does joy mean to them from a loyalty perspective. That's how the circle loyalty program comes into play and UX is involved in designing that as well because it's on our desktop, on the apps and it's in store as well. And finally, I'll come to this slide, uh, you know, where I'll, I'll, I'll be passing it on to my colleague, but inclusion is inherent to Target's culture, to Target's DNA. And without that culture at the forefront, none of this joy is possible, because unless we feel it ourselves, we can't bring it to someone else. And that heavily comes from a component of inclusion. So to talk more about accessibility, I'll invite my colleague, Rajat, uh, who's been with Target again for like more than 10 years, just like me, and really values and, you know, appreciates the work we do. So I'll hand it over to you, Rajat. Thank you, Yogi and Nam. Hello, everyone. In this image, you see a person holding a mobile phone using IRA services. Now, IRA is a tool used by guests who are blind or low vision to connect to trained agents who act as visual interpreters. Now, these agents give uh, real-time audio instructions, store details, or product information to help them navigate and shop independently. Now, that is one of the aspects of inclusion at Target. Next. Um, I've been a part of Target for around 10 years, and I can certainly say I have had the same opportunities as any other team member out there. Now, <clears throat> all right. Um, how can I say this? Especially when my manager is standing right next to me, I find it quite difficult. Anyway, um, I have not been treated any differently or have I been denied any opportunities because I am differently abled. Now, inclusion is very much a part of Target's culture. That's who we are. 
I can watch for that because I have had a first-hand experience of Target's inclusive culture and nature. And not just in the meetings, trainings, activities within Target or out external events. They ensure that I do not face any barriers. <clears throat> and we just saw an example of that. And they do it so subtly that I've never been made to feel that they are exclusively doing it because of my disability or condition. <clears throat> I love to be a part of Target family and I plan to retire from Target at the end of my career. Now, how many of us can say that? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> okay, um, I sometimes wonder if these guys can read my mind, especially when I have new ventures. Even as I contemplate, should I voice out the potential barriers that I can face? These guys are already onto it with solutions that mitigate the uh, barriers that I can face. Now you might wonder, what has that got to do with design? I would say everything. Our commitment to inclusion to our guests or team members means we have the uh, freedom to explore and experiment, especially with the ever-changing technology landscape. We learn and execute the best solutions to cater to the ever-changing behavior of our guests. That stems from our basic belief of giving seamless experience. So we always go beyond WCAG 2.0 level AA guidelines. Next. Now, accessibility, when you just do a quick Google search, you have many definitions, but the one I like the best is accessibility is simply a measure of how easily a person can participate in an activity. How we do it in the physical environment or the digital space, I will cover in a little while. But why we do it is to provide equal access and opportunities to our guests to promote social inclusion and the accessibility guidelines promotes coding best practices. It helps in SEO and SEM and also incorporates some of the universal design principles. Okay. Um, Accessibility team and target was set up in 2008, that's 2008, and we have come a long way since its inception. We incorporate some of the best practices to ensure that all of our digital offerings and in-store experiences are as inclusive as possible. The accessibility is included in every phase of the software development lifecycle, whether it is conceptual phase, design, development, irrespective of whoever the end user is. Now, let me show you how we get it done with the help of a few examples. In the middle, you see Caroline's cart. Caroline's cart was created to help uh, individuals with special needs. This um, helps the caregivers a viable option to um, transport individuals with special needs through the stores, thereby helping them to avoid maneuvering the cart and the wheelchair at the same time. Now, we have rolled out Caroline's Cart in all of the stores across the U.S. And <clears throat> um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, we have scored uh, possibly the highest score in 2020 um, Disability Equality Index, thereby earning us the distinction of being the best place to work for disability inclusion. And uh, the image on the right, you see, uh, is a line of our adaptive kids' clothing. This line of clothing is made for kids with disabilities to handle their everyday needs. It could be uh, something as simple as using the medical aid kits, or a um, you know, wheelchair user, or some other mobility issues, or even uh, when they have sensory perceptive uh, sensitivities. This is how we incorporate accessibility and we design for joy every day, whether it is for our guests or team members. Thank you.